Good afternoon and welcome to JCT's Fascinating Hobbies. I thought we would just finish off the uh, brochures that we've got here. So these are the Volvo brochures that I mentioned last time that we would go through. So let's start with this 1979 colour and upholstery brochure. So for 1979 we have a number of colours and we also see what I think to be the first use of colourful naming conventions of colours, if that makes sense. So for example we have mist blue and marine blue, which they do describe the colour but they are sort of uh, beginning to err on the side of um, creative naming like jade green etc. It's got mist green, which is very like jade green metallic. Uh, we also have a range of cloth options, uh, quite a few more colours than uh, the ones we previously looked at, including a few more leather options. We've also got some vinyl options for the 343. And as you can see, we've got our combination of colours which are available here. If we look here, we've got some examples of some of the real, really plush interiors that you can get. I quite like that red one, to be honest with you. Uh, the 245DL with uh, vinyl upholstery, which looks quite inviting. But I think nicest of all has to be the 264GL with beige leather upholstery. That looks very fetching. And you've got your 343s. And you've got your 265 GLE with beige cloth and vinyl upholstery, which uh, I would guess is very, very hard wearing. We also have this uh, rather nice little Volvo 66 colour and upholstery thing, and uh, that was a DAF variomatic originally. And when Volvo bought DAF, they rebadged that little car as the Volvo 66. So for that we've got our light brown cloth and our black cloth, cloth. colours. We can have the red, the brown, the beige, the white, the green, the aubergine, the yellow and the blue metallic. So, let's have a look and see what 1977 bought for us in the uh, 244 and 245 ranges. So starting off, we've got the uh, 244 DL there. <coughs> Excuse me. It's got a nice uh, cutaway of the car there with the engine, transmission, and running gear. Also have the emphasis on comfort, but also safety, with a fastened seat belt light in the back of the car as well as the front. The seat was also quite adjustable as well. In fact, look at that. The seat can fold. Front seats can fold completely flat, which is quite useful for carrying long loads. Uh, not much change in the dial setup from 1976, although I think the steering wheel has changed slightly for that year. And uh, has anything else in particular changed? Between 1976 and 1977, I don't think there was a huge amount of change, to be honest. If everything looks as it did in 1976. Although, the uh, fuel injected model gives you 123 horsepower. Uh, as opposed to the 121 for the year before. So it looks like there have been some revisions which have boosted power. A little bit more emphasis on the car's handling capabilities and also that enviable turning circle. Also still focusing on safety, that's something that you can't get away from with Volvo, certainly in this era. And this is rather interesting. This particular image, those wheels don't look uh, don't look correct. It's almost like they took the car photo of the car stationary, and then post editing 
Back in these days, it would have been literally sort of cut and paste, physically cut and paste. And they've put on uh, some additional photographs of the wheels in motion, which doesn't look quite right. You probably could have got away with the uh, car being taken stationary as it was and having the wheels stationary as well. You could just say it was a freeze frame and a very good photograph. Bit of a shame otherwise, that's just sort of that attention to detail which uh, annoys me in things like this. Somebody must have thought, oh yeah that'll be fine. Yes we can let that go out to publication. It reminds me of, um, this is really sort of petty little one really, it reminds me of the Morris Marina um, Morris Marina uh, presentation, sales presentation film and there's a scene near the end where you've got all the marinas lined up on the beach and you come on to the Marina TC and the rear of the Marina TC, the actual um, one of the uh, centre caps, hub, uh, centre hub covers is missing. It's not a hub cap, it's on those wheels, it's sort of like a central hub cover and it was missing and I think there was an earlier one when they were looking at a, um, a deluxe model where an entire hub cap was missing. It's just sort of silly little things like that, attention to detail which really can sort of put thoughts in people's minds of well if they can't be bothered with getting the getting the brochure right or the presentation right, how right is the car going to be? Now, this is something I touched on last time. So the door sills are cavity ventilated by slipstream and the outsides of the sills are sprayed with polyester, the insides of a rust inhibitor. So you've actually got air flowing through the sills and out of the sills to keep the sills dry and also rot free. And that was something I touched on uh, when we were looking at the 264 brochure. <coughs> now focusing on the 264 GL, which has a slightly snazzier steering wheel, the tachometer, overdrive transmission, so four speed overdrive, and relatively good power output actually. So torque-wise, we are looking at a peak of about 170 newton meters of torque, compared with 123 brake horsepower. So for the day, it was no ball of fire, but it would not hang about. It would certainly sort of be very capable for motorway cruising, for sustained motorway cruising. That coming on to our range of rather snazzy options we have got these rather fetching set of light alloy wheels which I think look rather good we've also got the uh, obligatory roof rack we've got those driving lamps that we touched on last time and also some fog lamps along with a more conventional looking uh, radio cassette which does look very nice actually yes that I would be quite the envy of the, my neighbours if I had that back then and also the self-leveling rear suspension. I'll just go through and have a bit of a look at the um, specifications here. And there was actually a pull out. You can also see the rear light treatment is very different to the uh, 264. So the 264 has got a more premium rear light setup, which I assume would also have a fog light. Not quite sure what's different about this. It just goes into a little bit more detail. may actually be an addition, there may have been something wrong with the original specifications or they would have had these as a quick fact sheet that you would sort of pick up at your local dealer rather than going for the whole brochure. So you would have this, if you were looking at some cards, you'd go, oh yes, we have the 244DL GL range and I can tell it's got all of these features and then you can compare it to the competitors that you're also looking at. 
Then we've got the 245, which is again really just sort of like a uh, literal, almost a addition to the 244 brochure. So it goes into a little bit about the car itself, but there isn't really much to it. It just gives you sort of ideas of the load carrying options that you've got with the vehicle and literally sort of how much you can get in there. I mean, there's a prime example of why the car was so popular with antique dealers. In fact, uh, I believe the first season of Lovejoy had him driving around in a yellow 245DL estate. But uh, then it went a little bit silly when he started going about on a Morris Minor, which, you know, wasn't really the vehicle that a um, well heeled man of his uh, means would be driving around in, especially when he's uh, dealing in antiques. I use the word dealing loosely because his character was a bit of a crook, albeit a lovable rogue. And that's really it for the 245 brochure. So again, I would assume that it would associate or accompany the 244 brochure, which gives you the main features of the uh, particular range of vehicles. I've also got this cup pull-out fare as well. This rather nice yellow 245DL, which I think was the colour of the one that they had in Beetlejuice, which uh, crashed over the bridge near the beginning of the film. Rather nice colour actually. Quite like that. And we'll just focus in on the various specs. Engine output pretty much the same as the other model. 244. And there we go. So that's it for today's look through the brochures. We'll probably be focusing on some newer brochures tomorrow or whenever I do this again. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, and also consider subscribing for more fascinating hobbies. Thank you for watching.